About three months ago, I published a video on the IBM and Resilient Integration app, and that works very nice, but in order for you to make changes to the way it works, you need to go here into the configuration of the tool and you know set your preferences, for example, specify what reference set, and so it was kind of a fix and didn't have much flexibility. Now, there's been a new addition into the App Store uh, App Exchange uh, called Curator Functions for Resilient, which has you know a couple of functions that we'll see in a minute: rules, actions, and workflows. Let's actually see it in action first. So we have sent a couple of uh, offenses already to Resilient and. For example, if we go into anywhere in particular, I mean this one in here, and we go into the artifacts and click here in action, we now have you know these new functions add to reference set and, and you can change this one um, and make it uh, far more flexible. So for example, by default, these functions works with two reference set called sample. But you see how easy it is to change that. So sample suspect IPs and blocked IPs. And as you see, there's nothing in any one of those. Now, if we go back to the resilient app and let's say that we want to add this uh, uh, particular IP into the suspect, so we click here. This is, these are the old functions. These are the new one. And we'll see that that is actually being executed. And if we go back to Curator, we should see that uh, 188 uh, address being added. And again, you'll see the, the benefits of these being functions and the flexibility of it in a minute. So if we look again for sample, we'll see that that IP is actually in this uh, okay and now let's say that we actually want to move that from the the suspect to the blocked IP well we can actually do that by executing this one in here and if we go back to curator we'll see that this has been moved from the suspect to the block IPs. And you see, it's not longer in the suspect. And now, okay, this is, you can say, well, this is similar to what you show in the previous video. Where is the advantage? And the advantage is again on the flexibility of this. So let's actually go into customization settings, go into the workflows and see the workflow that made that uh, function and this is this one example of moving a curator item from one reference set to another let's actually click and see it and now the advantage of this is that notice that this workflow is actually moves one stuff from another by first removing the item from a reference set and putting it into another but you can actually go here and click on the, f on the particular function click on the edit button and notice that you can change the you can of course create another one you can and, and you will have to obviously create manually create the reference set or via api create the reference set in curator uh, for this to work and here you can see the uh, json for the uh, pre-processing for the post-processing notice that this is actually adding a note as part of the logic so Again, you don't have to go into the curator configuration to change these things. You can actually do them uh, from here. Same thing with the with the other function, as well as the searches. So, again, if we go back to the to the actual workflows, yep, I don't want to make any changes in here. Notice that these are all the workflow provided and you can again edit them. Same thing with the searches. You can actually, you know, 
go ahead and modify the the actual function for the search so here are all the functions and you can again edit them change them change them modify them make them suit copy them and there are also some rules that were also added as part of the package y you can see those here at the end of it uh, I'm gonna be uh, putting in the video description a link to another video that shows how I set this up I mean I have a little bit of a challenge with the documentation so I made a quick video that shows how you set this up to enjoy this flexible way of improving the integration between Curator